dear colleagues, uh, dear uh, listeners, thank you very much. Um, at the beginning, I will do um, a kind of introduction, um, but most probably the speakers after me um, will um, have the same uh, introductions as well. Um, as you may know, um, in uh, old times in Chinese pharmacopoeia, um, it was um, nearly now 5,000 back that cannabis was described as a very good treatment for different, um, um, different diseases. However, um, the first described um, papers um, are from the 12th century, from the um, Arabic papers, uh, who described it as a very good treatment for um, convulsions um, as well as for um, epilepsies. Um, and it is um, well um, described again in this journal of cannabis therapeutics um, from uh, two or three years back. However, um, cannabis as a treatment came rather late uh, to Europe. Uh, it was brought by Irish doctor O'Shaughnessy, who um, published um, his work in um, this paper. Um, and he described um, how cannabis was um, very much successful in a 40 days, so nearly a newborn uh, girl who was treated with um, extract of cannabis indica for the intractable convulsions and um, thereafter she was doing very well. And soon after this description in the journal, um, also the uh, very much renowned English neurologist like Gowers and Reynolds also described um, very beneficial effects of um, cannabis and they published uh, their works in uh, already at that time a very much renowned journal Lancet. Um, soon after that, um, cannabis as a treatment came to um, English and American pharmacopoeias as well. Because we are in Slovenia, uh, which was a part uh, of former Yugoslavia, we should also mention that cannabis was a part of Pharmacopoeia Yugoslavica and a part of Serbian Pharmacopoeia um, in the 30s, um, and it was um, very well renowned as a very good treatment. And also, uh, Yugoslavia at that time and until 1977 was the biggest producer of cannabis in Europe. However, uh, soon after that, at the beginning of the 20th century, more precisely in 1937, Marijuana Tax Act um, was produced because um, marijuana was smoked um, as a hashish. Um, it was brought um, by French troops to Europe and then to America, and um, it was, um, it has become completely um, illegal to possess or transfer cannabis and even to do any research studies. And for a long time, um, it was Schedule I classification as for all um, other um, very dangerous drugs. And um, due to this fact, for nearly 100 years or 80 years, um, we didn't have any clear information about dosing, about drug interaction, efficacy, safety, nothing. Until September 2018, when um, cannabidiol or CBD was classified as a Schedule 5 medication, and this opened um, the research field. However, Again, um, recently in Europe, um, European Food Safety Authority um, has claimed that, on the, that even cannabidiol um, is a novel food, and as novel food, it should not be a part of different products um, like cosmetics or 
like um, uh, food um, ingredients. And this was also adopted in Slovenia. Um, however, um, this act is meant for all those food um, which uh, has been produced since 1997. So that means um, for the last 20 years, but we know that cannabis and cannabidiol were produced for millennia. A few facts um, about uh, cannabis and about the um, differences between different plants. There are mostly three plants which are um, important. One is called sativa, and it is mainly uh, produced in the European countries. The other one is called indica, it is more, more produced in the African and um, uh, Asian countries, and the other one, the, the third one is Ruderalis uh, from uh, South, uh, South America. Um, however, um, a very good sci scientist, um, Ethan Rousseau, who is writing a lot of paper, papers spe specifically on a cannabis extract, claimed that actually there are no um, much differences between one and another. And um, more important is what kind of so-called chemovar um, you will plant and um, you can get whatever you want um, out of this. So the, the ratio of cannabidiol and uh, THC in these chemovars can be from a very high ratio in favor of um, cannabidiol to um, a very low ratio in favor of uh, THC. And this is example from his paper, uh, where you can also see that it is not only dependent on cannabidiol and THC, but also on the other um, substances, which are terpenes and flavonoids. Um, and uh, with, with those, um, uh, some of the products um, can be energy making um, like uh, this one or uh, making you um, to feel more calm and to have inspiration like this one. Regarding the administration and dosing, which is quite important also for the uh, pediatric population, is that we mostly have three uh, different um, kinds of how we administrate uh, the drug. However, for the children, only oral is that one um, which is um, important and we cannot um, bring the extracts of cannabidiol or cannabis um, by other routes, but only by oral. Um, and also the delivery, um, if we use it um, orally, the effect will be within 60 minutes um, and will last um, around eight hours. We should also know uh, that monitoring of other drugs children are taking, um, these are children with very severe epilepsy and, and cephalopathies, what I will show uh, later. Um, there can be interaction with uh, cannabidiol and cannabis, and uh, specifically clobazam, which is called in our country frisium, can be uh, five-fold or for 500 times um, increased um, when you are taking uh, concomitantly um, cannabidiol. It, it holds true also for the other, like topiramate, rufinamate, um, eslicarbazepine, and zonisamide. Um, however, um, it has no much effect on valproate, which is called depakin, um, but we should monitor liver enzymes um, more often because both are um, um, metabolized um, in liver through the first pass metabolism. This is um, a slide um, made from um, um, Dr. Goldstein um, paper in O'Shaughnessy Journal from 2015, where she is describing that most probably cannabidiol, cannabidiol has different um, actions um, and it can mimic the actions of different um, already used classical anti-epileptic drugs. However, um, only 
um, effect of so-called voltage-gated sodium channels is um, questionable, and maybe this is why cannabidiol is so successful in uh, two um, very um, difficult and very severe epileptic syndromes called Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. And you can see that the benzodiazepines and stiripentol, which are also effective in these two syndromes, are um, mimics of the cannabidiol, or cannabidiol is the mimics of these two drugs. And also, you should um, also know that it is different to majority of um, anti-epileptic drugs where we can get better um, effect when we are raising the dose slowly. In cannabidiol, this is not true. Um, because you can come to some plateau after you are increasing the dose, and when you are further increasing the dose, the effect will win. So um, you should be aware that maybe small amounts of cannabidiol are better than larger amounts. And this was also um, described by authors from Israel about this so-called um, bell-shaped response, which is um, more common in uh, use of cannabidiol than when we use a pure extract. If we go now to the treatment of severe epilepsies, um, this is another epileptologist who published in Lancet um, 200 years after the renowned professors. Um, and he was already at that time claiming that um, when you try different anti-epileptic drugs, two, three, four, five, or combine them, you will always find one third of children who will not respond to treatment. And this was also proven. Um, you see, the response to first drug can be 47%, so 47% of patients will respond to the first drug. Only 13% of patients will respond to second drug, and only 4% uh, to third and the further drugs. But not only this, no. There are um, more um, side effects when you are combining anti-epileptic treatments, and um, there can be um, severely decreased quality of life of these children. These are the most common uh, side effects um, which are common to majority of the anti-epileptic drugs. Um, until 2013, there was no, not much paper of using cannabinoids in childhood um, epilepsy. There were just anecdotal reports of two or three uh, children being included in uh, studies for adults. But already um, um, at this time, it is paper from 2014, uh, David Orinsky and his group, um, Orin Davinsky, sorry, and his group published uh, this paper where they mentioned that most probably cannabidiol um, will have a very good therapeutic role in all this uh, condition for children. And um, um, also, they put um, uh, on the list um, schizo schizophrenia. And this is the latest paper from the Neuro Neurosciences News, where they did um, studies on mouse models of so-called Angelman syndrome, which is a neurodevelopmental disorder, and they showed a very good response to cannabidiol. And now uh, they are going on and um, doing studies also with other neurodevelopmental disorders like Rett syndrome, Pitt Hopkins, and also schizophrenia. So um, uh, Orin Davinsky and his group, they were right. Um, it, it seems that it will be an effective treatment also for these conditions. Um, this is um, June 17, 2014, where uh, GV Pharmaceutical published this study on reduction of seizures in severe epilepsies um, using cannabidiol. And thereafter, two years after, um, the, the, the study group was um, increased. There were already 214 patients. Um, um, being from 1 to 30 years of age from 11 uh, centers where, where they proved 
the same um, efficacy um, of cannabidiol. And the same was uh, proven also by the Israeli uh, group who had a similar group of children as we had, um, and um, they proved a very good um, uh, response, not, not only to cannabidiol, but to um, cannabis extract um, of um, ratio 20 to 1. And thereafter, after 2017, um, it was proven scientifically by uh, double-blind controlled studies that cannabidiol is very efficient in these two uh, severe syndromes like Dravet syndrome and um, uh, Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. If we go now to um, our study, um, we used this um, Article 37 about unproven intervention regarding the ethical pr principles, which says that um, a, a doctor or a physician may use an unproven intervention um, uh, if it is in the physician's judgment that it offers hope of saving life um, and alleviating suffering. So that means for the severe conditions like encephalopathies. How we started? We started in January 2015. Um, we never promoted um, cannabidiol treatment or cannabis treatment by ourselves. We never said to our patients or to our parents, um, let us try cannabidiol. No, we were waiting for the parents to come and to ask, do you think that after five or six or seven anti-epileptic um, drugs which failed, maybe a cannabidiol would be effective. So um, we started, we had the ethical approval pool already in 2013, and the first study was done with the pure cannabidiol um, imported from uh, Germany, um, where in one ml uh, there was 100 milligram. We had 70 patients um, who met uh, inclusion criteria, that means that um, the response to, two, uh, to at least two anti-epileptic drugs failed. Um, and these are the baseline characteristics. You see that uh, there was approximately the same number of females and male. Uh, these were the uh, age, this was the age distribution. And um, this is the quantity of anti-epileptic drugs these children were taking. Some of them had also so-called alternative um, um, regimes of treatments. This is vagal nerve stimulation, ketogenic diet, steroids, immunoglobulins. So these were extremely severe uh, cases. Um, two patients died during the study period, and two patients were lost of follow-up. So we, were, um, we ended with 66 patients. And uh, as you can see, uh, these were not um, only the epilepsies, but the majority of them, they had severe encephalopathies, either genetic or post-hypoxic or encephalitic or chromosomal, so the most severe uh, cases. And these are um, our results. You can see that 21% of these patients were seizure uh, free and uh, the other also responded um, very well. However, one-fifth of the patients uh, didn't show any improvement. When we compare this to the study uh, from which I mentioned from Israel, the result of having more than 50% seizure cessation, which is um, seemingly um, a very good effect, was 52% in Israeli study and 48.5% in our study. So um, it was nearly the same. And also we described um, similar side effects as they did, which were not severe and um, were very rare. Uh, only five patients had this kind of side effects. However, um, we were asking the parents um, if they can um, fulfill the questionnaire, and um, we have listed all these possible beneficial effects, and many of children, they had these um, good um, beneficial effects. This is just the list to see how many anti-epileptic uh, drugs these children were taking before we have started them add-on um, cannabidiol. And um, at the end, 
Um, this is the latest systematic review, um, which included also um, our paper. Um, until now, there were three different systematic review done. This is the last one from September 2019. And you can see that um, they have included in this systematic review um, only the retrospective studies, not the prospective ones. They are in one other paper. And um, um, it is very, I know the figures are very small. Um, however, um, there are, um, uh, regarding the beneficial effects of more than 50% improvement um, of seizures was nearly the same in all these studies. So um, we uh, a little bit changed the algorithm today. Um, when we have and when we are dealing with resistant epilepsy, um, that means um, not effect of two or more anti-epileptic drugs, we always consider um, other options like surgery, ketogenic diet, vagal nerve stimulation. And um, if it is not effective by one molecular cannabidiol, then we go to um, um, cannabis products, which are um, at this time not available um, in Slovenia, but um, uh, they are importing them from, uh, from the States. So we have two groups where there is no response to cannabidiol. Um, one is using the products from USA, mainly uh, Charlotte Webb and Halley's Hope with different concentration. And the other one um, where the parents themselves decide uh, to treat their children because they are um, uh, so resistant to all the other drugs with the um, so-called artisanal cannabis or homemade cannabis. Um, and um, we always ask them to do um, uh, analysis. Analysis is free in Institute um, Josef Stefan in uh, Ljubljana. And uh, then we um, see what kind of uh, cannabinoids are um, in these specimens. It was, uh, there are um, already two papers published on homemade products of cannabis, and both um, um, resulted in a quite good and um, very high percentage of um, seizure cessation. Um, and um, the other paper, you see, it was the, the highest uh, cessation of seizures mentioned ever. Um, they also mentioned that the, the product, if when you use the uh, whole plant cannabis, um, can be of much, much lower dosages than uh, usually used for cannabidiol. At the beginning, in 2015, this is uh, Dr. Paul Hornby, who will um, have a lecture uh, tomorrow. He was so kind to do um, um, analysis of cannabis in the first 12 patients in 2014 who were treated with the artisanal cannabis. And I know that the, the number is very small, but um, um, it seems that it was quite effective because 60% of um, these children, uh, the parents reported they were seizure free. Um, the aim of our observational study was to see um, what kind of cannabis products are um, on the Slovenian market um, um, produced by the farmers. Um, and um, always the parents themselves have initiated this treatment and it was always for the children with severe epileptic encephalopathy. Um, and then uh, we did the um, analysis um, in the Josef Stefan um, Institute. Um, we sent them the questionnaire and um, we got 16 uh, responses of 27 children taking this kind of the product. And as you can see, uh, the results were um, very good. Um, the global impression scale for them, um, overall improvement was um, 93%. Um, these are the parents reporting. You can see that um, the parents reported not only um, the mm, decrease of the seizures, but also um, um, very much improved quality of life, which is uh, much more um, important may maybe than the seizures um, um, themselves. Um, our study 
which is small um, from the artisanal cannabis, suggest that the whole plant um, cannabis extracts uh, are most probably safe um, and most probably have better efficacy than um, cannabidiol um, alone. Um, and uh, we didn't find any um, significant side effects in these children and um, the quality of life was um, much better. Um, to conclude, uh, there are two studies done uh, during the last um, two, three years, which are proving also a long-standing uh, um, effect of cannabidiol. Now, um, in uh, the States, they have uh, 607 patients um, with uh, still um, very good and long-term um, effect. And this is the recent, um, recently published um, uh, paper from the same group um, now um, they have already 144 weeks of follow-up. That means only uh, already three years. And um, it seems that it is effective, it is long-term, specifically for these two syndromes, which is Lennox-Gastaut and Dravet syndrome. And the side effects are not um, severe. They are mild, just somnolence and some diarrhea. And the same is claiming also um, Peruca and his group and they are also questioning um, themselves um, when and whether it would be also um, wise to, to do a study to try if cannabidiol and cannabis products can be used um, as monotherapy. In summary, um, there is um, quite a lot of papers with class one evidence that uh, cannabidiol improves seizures. Um, it, it seems that not only the two syndromes which I mentioned, but also the other encephalopathies and severe resistant epilepsies can be responsible to cannabinoids. It seems also that um, when you compare cannabidiol to whole plant extracts, uh, the second are more potent than cannabidiol alone. Side effects are mild which also was proven in our study. And um, the best combination most probably is with clobazam and valproate, but you should be cautious because clobazam can, be, um, can uh, reach very high and um, liver enzymes should be uh, checked in valproate used. Um, Long-term safety and treatment has also been established now for the three years already. And um, in the pipeline of uh, scientific research, there are also other um, cannabinoids um, of the plant cannabis. According to all these um, experiences, we have written in the Slovenian language um, recommendations or guidelines for um, using cannabinoids um, in child neurology. Um, they can be accessed at our um, web page of the Foundation of Child Neurology um, uh, in Slovenian language as well as um, in English language. For the conclusions, um, I'm using this um, paper from um, Maya Clinic um, Processes from September 2009 because um, I find it um, very wise and um, I think it should be used um, for the future. Um, it says that cannabidiol and hemp are non-intoxicating, as we know, and potentially quite useful phytocannabinoid substances that continue to grow in popularity. Patients will definitely continue to use them, and physicians should definitely inform themselves um, for both potential safety and potential therapeutic benefit. Um, it is um, of crucial um, point that a careful selection of a product is done and we should know what is the safety and what is the efficacy. It is up to the discretion of the physician whether to suggest trying full spectrum formulation or only cannabidiol, which was already proved um, uh, according to the safety and efficacy. Um, and we should encourage physicians to not disregard patients' interest in these therapies 
and instead to retain clinical curiosity as well as healthy skepticism when it comes to attempts to explore new options. Our hope is that physicians will continue to educate both patients and themselves about alternative therapies utilized by a growing number of the public with the example of cannabidiol and hemp in particular as it continues to come to the forefront of public interest. Thank you very much.